Hi, good evening, everyone. My name is Rebecca Michael, and I am a neurologist and headache specialist at UCSF. And tonight we are going to be talking about migraine with aura. So I'm going to give a few seconds for a few more people to join in. I see there's some more people joining. Can everybody hear me okay? Hi, Johnny. All right, while we're giving a few more minutes for people to join, um, I'll just introduce myself again, Rebecca Michael from UCSF. I'm a neurologist and a headache specialist here. Uh, but tonight we're gonna be talking about migraine with aura, which is a very great topic. It's of particular interest to me. It's one of the areas of um, migraine that I find the most interesting. It's part of why I wanted to go into migraine, uh, the field. So, so it's particularly interesting. Um, so I'll give a few more minutes. I see other people joining in. Great. And then if you guys have any specific questions about migraine with aura, you can go ahead and post them now. I'll try and get to them uh, towards the end of the talk. All right. So, so just to give an outline too, so this talk is on migraine with aura, and what we're going to be talking about, I had uh, when should we consider other types of testing, um, what are some things that could mimic a migraine aura, um, when should you be concerned or bring up different conditions uh, like this to your physician. Um, the third thing is we'll talk about risks that are associated with migraine with aura. And then the last thing we'll talk about are different treatment options, um, specifically geared towards uh, migraine with aura. And then at the end, I'll take some questions from everybody. And I see we've got a lot more people who have joined. Great. So, so again, my name's Rebecca Michael, and uh, let's go ahead and get started. So what is a migraine aura? So a migraine aura, it's a short-lived temporary sensory experience. It usually lasts between five minutes to 60 minutes. And the most common or what we say are the typical aura symptoms are either visual, sensory, or uh, disturbances in speech. Um, so about 25% of migraineurs suffer from migraine with aura. And the one thing to note is not every migraine can is accompanied with the aura. Um, and you can also have aura without the headache. So, so typically and classically, an aura comes before the onset of the headache, but it can also come at the beginning of the headache. It can also come during, and it can also come after. And like I mentioned, it, it can also happen without a headache. Um, so, so I mentioned that the three most common are visual, sensory, and problems with language. So visual, it can be anything from seeing some type of wavy lines. Some people say they feel like it looks like there's some kind of heat wave. Um, the most common is something that we call a scintillating scotoma, which means that there is an area of the vision that's flashing, and then it kind of grows over a period of time, and then it goes away and the headache comes on. For sensory auras, the most typical that we hear are that people have it that start in their fingers, it then progresses up through the hand, it goes into the face, it can actually even involve the tongue too. So that's something that we can commonly see with migraine with aura. Um, we also can sometimes see people have a little bit of difficulty with their language. 
um, although that isn't as common as the visual auras. Um, very rarely we can see people have weakness on one side of their body that can happen with a migraine. That's actually called a hemiplegic migraine. What's very important to know about that is you need to make sure that there aren't other conditions that could be causing that, like a stroke. I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, some people can also get symptoms of feeling confused or have dizziness or a double vision with uh, their migraine or before their migraine as well. Again, those are less common, but those are called um, a vestibular migraine or a migraine with a brainstem aura. Um, so th that's just a little bit about exactly what an aura is. Um, some things to, to think about um, in terms of the other things that a migraine aura could represent. Um, and when we as neurologist and your physician might consider doing some other kind of testing. Um, so the first thing is like I mentioned, a typical migraine aura lasts five minutes to 60 minutes. So if your auras are consistently lasting longer than that, or if you have an aura, particularly we start to think more than four hours, that's a reason to mention that to your provider or your neurologist is we might consider doing other types of testing to make sure something else isn't going on. Um, one really important distinction that I like to make is that a migraine aura, you know, in some ways also looks like symptoms that can look like a stroke. And I even see in some of the comments right now as I'm talking, that you know, some people are very scared the first time they experience their auras. And that's, that's completely typical. You are not alone in that. Um, we like to say that something that distinguishes a migraine aura from a stroke typically, and again, this isn't always the case, but it's, it's the um, progression of the symptoms. So for example, with the numbness and the tingling, it starts in the fingers and it goes up. Um, in terms of the vision, it also tends to, to grow in the vision. If there is anything that's very sudden onset in terms of um, all of a sudden you cannot feel your arm or a side of the face, that is something that's more concerning. Um, and then we also tend to think of things that are more of a loss of symptoms. So for example, if you have difficulty seeing out of one eye, that's also concerning more for a stroke than it is a migraine aura. Oh, I just see here, it's hard to hear. Can you guys hear me a little bit better now? All right. Um, so, so anything that happens much more suddenly or abruptly is more concerning. Um, or if you are having any kind of change in what you see as your um, typical aura symptoms, that definitely needs to be something that you um, bring up to your primary care. Sorry, I'm trying to turn up my volume here. Can you guys hear me better? All right. Um, but, but typically, if it's something that's new and sudden, you should have urgent evaluation for that. Um, okay, good. Thank you. Somebody's telling me that the volume is better. Excellent. So, other things to consider, um, other than if it's lasting more than four hours, if it's sudden onset, if it's any kind of change from something you've experienced before, um, th those are the three things that are, are very important to bring up to um, your physician to make sure that there isn't anything else that's going on that could be contributing. Um, I'm seeing a lot of comments come in, which is great. So then when we start thinking about, well, now that you know that you have 
migraine with aura, what does that mean in terms of other types of conditions associated with that? Um, there's something that's always important to mention that that neurologist and your primary care will likely mention to you is that having migraine with aura is a risk factor for a stroke. Um, and it's something that we know can happen even with um, younger people, especially women, women even younger than 35. So it's very important that you're also managing other stroke risk factors, making sure that blood pressure is well controlled, making sure that cholesterol is well controlled, that your eating is healthy, um, is possible, exercising, and really making sure that all of those things are in control so that you're minimizing other stroke risk factors. Um, another thing that's important to know is that if you do have migraine with aura, that um, there's a risk of taking birth controls with estrogen with that. And so it's recommended to avoid birth controls with estrogen if you also have migraine with aura. So that's also something that's important to know if you've had a migraine with an aura for the first time, mention it to your to your physician, your OBGYN, because they should consider switching. There's plenty of other options of birth control out there that don't contain estrogen, but we like to um, really make sure that all of your risk factors are managed. Um, so, so now that we've gone through what is a migraine aura, um, what are some things to consider when you have it, what's atypical, now what's the risk with migraine and stroke? Um, and then the last thing are, um, what are different types of treatment for migraine with aura? Because as I'm, I'm continuing to see in these comments, and it's great that I'm getting so many comments, people are mentioning the different kinds of auras that they have and that they can be very troublesome. And even for some of my patients, it's, it's one of the most concerning things about their migraine are these symptoms because they do have difficulty with their vision or um, sensation. So there are unfortunately no clear treatment guidelines for just migraine with aura. Um, one thing that we often say is that when you do have a migraine with aura, um, it can be an opportunity to take your acute medication sooner in order to help prevent the severe headache. Um, but that actually taking those acute medications might not necessarily reduce the length of the aura. So that's when the preventive medications become very important. And I'm sure a lot of you on here know, but the difference between the acute and the preventive medications, the acute are what you take when you actually are getting the migraine or the aura or the headache, and the preventive medications are what you take every day in order to prevent the headache. So in terms of some of the preventive medications, again, there's no clear guidelines on one specific one to take for aura. But there are some thoughts that a medication like verapamil actually might be helpful for migraine with aura. Um, some other medications, one of the, the natural supplements, magnesium, has been thought to be helpful for migraine with aura. Um, some providers will even suggest a baby aspirin. Again, these are all things that you really need to talk to your specific provider about, but there are some thoughts of uh, different medications that can be helpful. Um, so, so in terms of then, there are um, also some medications that are thought to be helpful for people who have prolonged auras. Um, if you do tend to have more of these prolonged auras, again, like I mentioned, you need to uh, mention that to your provider. They might look at other things to make sure there isn't anything else that's contributing. But sometimes some IV medications can be very helpful for that. 
Um, Depakote has been thought to be helpful for that. Um, we have some other medications. Uh, Diamox has been thought to be helpful for that as well. Um, lastly, I'll just mention, some of you may have heard of, there is a device called transcranial magnetic stimulation that is only approved for patients with migraine with aura. Um, one of the ways that migraine aura is thought to occur is from a type of process in the brain called cortical spreading depression, which is just a fancy term for this electrical wave. This specific device, uh, TMS, is thought to help uh, stop that. Um, it can be used as a preventive and as an acute treatment. Um, so, so if you do have a lot of migraine with auras, that might be something the TMS device uh, to consider talking to your provider about. So I just have a few minutes here where I'm going to summarize what I talked about and then I'll start answering your questions. So again, so a migraine aura is a short-lived sensory experience. The most typical are visual. Visual is by far the most common. The others are a sensory or also a language. Very rarely are weakness, called a hemiplegic, um, dizziness, called a vestibular, or confusion, which is called a migraine with brainstem aura. Again, those are much more rare. Um, so then when it comes to these auras, things to really watch out for are atypical, or if it's lasting longer than an hour, um, if you had any of the ones that I mentioned are atypical, like the weakness, the double vision, or the confusion, definitely either seek um, more urgent medical care or talk to your physician about those. Um, and um, if it's any kind of change from the aura that you've had before. Um, and then in terms of, we talked about migraine aura is a risk factor for stroke, especially if you are a woman. Um, so really making sure that you're managing all of the other things that might contribute to a stroke, high blood pressure, cholesterol. Uh, the last thing too is if you have migraine with aura, being on a birth control with estrogen um, would also increase that risk. So I would recommend uh, talking to your provider about going on a birth control without estrogen. And then the last thing we talked about treatment options. Again, I mentioned there's no clear, specific um, guidelines on the treatment options for, for migraine with aura, but it, it can be seen the aura is an opportunity to take medication sooner to help prevent the headache, and then the preventive medications can be very helpful at helping reduce um, the frequency, and some of those included the um, verapamil, magnesium, um, Depakote, um, some IV medications as well, and then it's also thought the device, the TMS 